While a volcanic eruption is still ongoing north of the town of Greenavik in Iceland, I have instead turned my attention temporarily to another volcano in the country, as deep in the interior of Iceland the ground has begun to rise at a volcano with a large caldera which has not erupted in 63 years. There, at the Askia volcano, beginning on March 7th, the ground started to rise at a rate of 4.3 millimeters a day. This is a very high rate of uplift, which, if this trend continues at the same rate, will total 1.58 meters a year from now. In other words, the Askia volcano is now temporarily undergoing the highest rate of ground deformation on the planet, even surpassing Iwo Jima in Japan. The sensor which is showing the strongest uplift is called OLAC, and this happens to be centered exactly above a recently in place cluster of two sills that formed during a prior period of unrest between July of 2021 and September of 2023. During that prior period, a volume of 39 million cubic meters of molten rock ascended from 3.3 kilometers and was emplaced at a depth of between 3.1 and 2.6 kilometers. This prior activity originally reversed the prior trend of subsidence that had dominated the caldera since 1961, uplifting it by 65 centimeters and resulting in a prolonged period of Astria being placed at a yellow alert level. Since then, magma has still been intruding into one of these shallower sills, albeit at a lower rate. Well, although it may be too early to say as much, and this could be a false positive, I once again interpret that an increased rate of magma is intruding into one of these sills. The heat from the rising magma has resulted in the increased flow of hydrothermal fluids and gases into a femoral field in the southeast section of Askia's 1875 caldera, resulting in an increased rate of volcano tectonic earthquakes. However, an increase in the rate of volcanic earthquakes is also occurring in a section of Astria's caldera ring faults. This is occurring due to the transfer of strain generated by ground uplift into the ring faults, causing them to occasionally rupture and move, creating earthquakes. Sometimes the rupturing of faults occurs via larger segments that generate earthquakes large enough to be felt, only to be followed by numerous aftershocks and creating an earthquake swarm. One such earthquake swarm began at 10.40 a.m. local time on March 25th with a magnitude 3.5 quake and was soon followed by 13 other earthquakes between magnitude 0 and 2.5. When I first looked at the uplift data, I assumed that it was merely giving false information because ice had once again formed on the sensor, creating an unusually strong but ultimately fake uplift signal. Now, with the increased rate of earthquakes and an earthquake swarm, I am leaning towards this uplift signal actually being real. In fact, this signal is 80% stronger than the maximum daily uplift rate at any point during the prior magmatic intrusion. This likely indicates a greater volume of magma is rising than at any point since 2020 into the Astia volcano that magma is being placed at shallower depths than beforehand, or a combination of both. Of course, more confirmation of this is needed, but if the greatly elevated rate of earthquakes and uplift continues, in my opinion, Askia's alert level should be raised from green to yellow, which has not yet been done. My current interpretation is that much like the ongoing Three Sisters magmatic intrusion in Oregon, which is much weaker by the way, Askia's uplift is occurring intermittently but repeatedly in the same location. Astia has erupted approximately a dozen times in the last 1,000 years, producing primarily effusive to mildly explosive basaltic eruptions which produce small spatter and cinder cones. However, if too much rifting occurs and basalt intrudes into Astia's underlying rhyolitic magma chamber, then it can produce silica-rich, highly explosive eruptions reading as a VEI 4 or 5. This is what occurred in 1875 when the two compositions mixed, resulting in the creation of a brand new 5.5 km wide caldera and causing ash to fall as far away as Sweden. Due to the behavior of the suspected current magmatic intrusion, the molten rock likely has a basaltic composition.